Hi, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. The topic of my literature re review was childcare in the United States, Sweden, and Guatemala. To further my understanding of the topic, I interviewed a mother, Jessica. She has twin daughters and works full-time at an elementary school. Her husband quit his job a few years ago and is now a stay-at-home dad. Though this type of arrangement is becoming more common, I thought that Jessica would be able to provide an interesting perspective on the issue. She is the site leader for a before and after school program at an elementary school, which means her position is 12 months long as she works through the summer, rather than the typical 10 months that most individuals work when employed by a school district. Due to her position, she is able to work a split shift where she begins her day at six in the morning, works for a few hours, has a break, then goes back in the afternoon and works until 6 p.m. Though she has changed schools since having her daughters, she has maintained the same position at each site and recently was promoted to oversee the programs at all of the elementary schools in the district. The flexibility within this job allows her to still have time to spend with her family and take care of any household duties. She is able to manipulate her schedule when warranted, such as with taking her daughters to doctor appointments. As she mentioned, an added benefit at this job is that she does not have to pay for childcare. Her daughters can attend the program for free because she is an employee, and they can attend at any school whether she works at that program or not. This has taken some of the stress off of her and her husband if the girls need to be at school earlier or cannot be picked up from school until later in the afternoon. It has also helped in lowering cost of childcare because they do not have to provide that additional expense. While she does work outside of the home, she also experiences aspects of the second shift that was often mentioned in the literature concerning mothers. The second shift refers to the responsibilities of child care and housework that are disproportionately undertaken by women, in addition to their paid labor. For Jessica, examples of such work include packing lunches for her daughters before she leaves for work, preparing dinner when she comes home, and washing the laundry. Her husband picks the girls up from school in the afternoon, takes them to any activities they may have scheduled, and in general watches over them. Though their arrangement is reversed, compared to a more common family unit where the husband works outside of the home and the wife stays at home to care for the children and maintain the household, gender norms are still in place. As evidenced by the work that Jessica does at home, she fulfills feminine role expectations while her husband, Mike, is more involved with the fun activities. Even her job exemplifies complying with gender norms. It provides the flexibility needed to raise children and is still a form of work that would be considered nurturing. Often, working a flexible job means sacrificing higher pay. But because Jessica has been employed by the school district for so long, she does not have to worry about such decisions that may plague other moms who work outside of the home. The gender division of labor was a major subtopic in my literature review. All three countries experience an asymmetry between fathers and mothers in their work and family roles. Even with an atypical family arrangement, Jessica completes more of the tasks necessary for keeping the household in order, though caring for the children is almost equally split. A challenge that Jessica did mention with working outside of the home is trying to balance family time when there are work needs. This can place additional stress on her and her family. Fortunately, she said that such situations do not occur very frequently. When they do arise, however, family time is often sacrificed in order to complete whatever needs to be done for work. In my literature review, I also discussed childcare policies and the role the government plays. For most women in the United States, Paid maternity leave is not guaranteed by most companies. These policies are left up to individual employers, and according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, only about 12% of Americans in the workforce have access to paid parental leave. 
California is one of the only states that currently offers publicly funded paid maternity leave. New mothers are offered up to six weeks of paid leave at 55% of their salary. So even then they aren't receiving the full amount that they typically would be if they were working. For Jessica, however, she received a lot of support from her job in regards to their leave policy. She was able to take eight weeks of maternity leave and 12 weeks of family leave, but only a portion of the maternity leave was paid. Family leave was established under the Family and Medical Leave Act, which became law in 1993. Qualified employees are allowed to take 12 weeks of unpaid job protected leave for specific family and medical reasons. Though this leave was unpaid, it still provided Jessica with an opportunity to spend more time with her newborn daughters. During this time, had her husband not been working, though she would not have been able to take so much time off of work because she would not have been able to afford it. Working in the childcare setting, Jessica mentioned that she realizes how fortunate she is. Daily, she sees families struggling to provide adequate care due to the cost. She is grateful that she does not have to pay for additional childcare, but discussed how this can place additional strain on a relationship. Through her job, she has also realized that society is not as supportive of working mothers, especially if they are single parents. She mentioned how she has grown close to such moms over the years and hears of the challenges they face in the workplace, working jobs that are not as flexible for companies that do not place as much importance on family. She hears of their frustrations and fears that any mom has, whether they are single or not, about making the wrong decision by choosing the workforce over staying home. Though the articles I used in my literature review hardly mentioned the challenges single parents face, I understand how problems such as finding quality, affordable child care are magnified when there's only one parent to support the household. This is why it is crucial that such changes be made so that every family can have access to the necessary resources. In a recent study conducted in 2013, data showed that mothers are now breadwinners in 40% of American homes, meaning they earn as much or more than their partners or are single mothers providing the sole income to support their family. The study then found that a majority of society tends to disapprove of working mothers, with 74% of adults saying that the increasing number of mothers working for pay has made it harder to raise children, and 51% agreeing that children are better off if their mother stays home and does not hold a job. These findings support Jessica's assertion that society does not provide the necessary support for working mothers, often making it more difficult for them to work or leading them to believe that they are doing the wrong thing by working outside of the home. Jessica also mentioned an important aspect of being able to balance work and family life, which is familial support. Without such support, she would have had trouble caring for her daughters before they were able to go to school. Even though they do receive care at school that only started the summer before they began their kindergarten year. At the time, she remembers looking up what it would cost to send them both to a childcare facility and being shocked at the price. She knew that she would not be able to afford sending them every day. And if she had not had family members available to watch her daughters, she most likely would have had to either figure out a new work schedule or quit her job altogether for the time being simply because she would not have been earning simply because what she would have been earning would have mainly been spent on childcare. For many mothers, this is the reason that they leave the workforce altogether until their children are older. And this is a very real situation for many families, which is why the most important recommendation in my literature review was establishing quality, affordable childcare so that parents do not have to make such decisions and suffer because of the costs. While it is possible to balance family and work life, Jessica's situation is not typical. She receives support from her stay-at-home husband, family, and work. Much of what was discussed throughout the interview contrasted the information presented in the literature, but this is because her situation is more unique than most. 
Many families do not have access to such resources or benefits like Jessica does. They struggle to decide on the best option available for their children. This is why childcare is an issue that requires more research in order for, to present viable options and solutions here in the United States and elsewhere. Thank you so much for listening.